It's a principle known as jus soli, or right of the soil. More commonly, it's known as birthright citizenship. And here in the U.S. since 1868, when the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution was adopted, it's been the law of the land that if you're born here, you're a citizen here. But according to an Axios interview released today, Donald Trump is looking to change all that. Some legal scholars believe you can get rid of birthright citizenship without changing the Constitution. With an executive could... order. Exactly. Right. Uh, have you thought about that? Yes. It's, it's in you. the process. It'll happen. This With year. an executive order. That's what you're talking about, right? Yes, yeah, exactly very interesting what I'm talking about. I didn't think anybody but knew that but me. I thought I was the only one. Well, we all know now, and while it's still up for debate whether Trump really can make that change on his own, between this and the 5,200 active military troops headed to the border to stop those migrant caravans, there's a lot of concern about what's happening to the values of the U.S. that we were founded on. Joining me to discuss are Heather Cox Richardson, political history professor at Boston College, author of To Make Men Free, A History of the Republican Party. Good to see you. Yes. Carrie Hong is assistant professor of law at BC Law School with a focus on immigration policy. Good to see you. And Major Matthew McKnight is a reservist in the Marine Corps who served in Iraq and is now Chief Commercial Officer at Ginkgo Bioworks here in Boston. Good to see you, too. I want to start with you. Here is Sarah Sanders yesterday uh, commenting on these policies we just talked about. The president's number one job and number one priority is to protect the safety and security of Americans, and he's going to do what he deems necessary in order to do that. So you spent part of your life protecting the safety and security of Americans. I have not. But as a layperson, sending 5,200 troops to the border when there are 2,000 National Guardsmen already there, when the caravan numbers are declining, and when they're at least a month away, doesn't sound to me like its goal is protecting the safety and security of Americans. Am I wrong? Well, look, I think that the statement that uh, Sarah Sanders made is absolutely true. It is the president's job and his prerogative as commander in chief to make the decisions that he and his advisors deem necessary to keep the country safe. Is this necessary, sending 5,200 troops now, a week before the election, coincidentally, to the southern border? You know, the great thing is, um, is that we have an amazing team on the national security side um, making these decisions. On the other hand, uh, I think if you look at this situation and you say to yourself, um, what could be done, um, the president... Uh, has many tools at his disposal. And um, sending 5,200 troops to augment the Border Patrol um, and the National Guard, and the National Guard uh, is a decision that he can make. And the only way to check that, right, is if uh, Congress, using its Article I authority, were to s say, you know what, we do not believe that this is the right path. And they have the right to do that. But that's the only other or in a part of our government that could make that. Uh, Except choice. on talk shows, uh, actually. Except on talk I'm not shows. saying he didn't have the power, but it seems to me I could make a case, as Sanders did, if this caravan was still 7,000 people and was a day away from the border, that maybe you need to augment the National Guard and the border control. I don't understand with a month away how, with a straight face, anybody can argue that this is not about politics and is about border security. Maybe in a month they could, but not today. Can they? No, it's, it's absolutely about politics and about the upcoming election. In the last week, we started, it was only last week, we started with a butchered journalist. Uh, then we moved to the death of two African Americans. And then we moved in to Kentucky. in Kentucky. And then we moved to the bombs being sent to prominent Democrats. And then we moved to the massacre of 11 Jewish Americans. And in the process of that week, Trump's numbers dumped four points, which is a huge dump right before an election, and he's got to change the subject. And the caravan was the subject with which he was going to go in front of the American but, but people. But he's not, the, in all fairness, he's not the first wag the dog president who has no, decided no, 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 to no, do no. something like this. The October with an surprise election. is pretty well established. Can yeah. we add something to this discussion? This effort to wipe out birthright citizenship by executive order, no less a legal authority than Paul Ryan, the Republican Speaker of the House, says, of course he can't do it by executive order. It's in the Constitution. Constitution. Who's right here, the president's counsel or Paul Ryan? Well, Paul Ryan. And, and I mean, Trump can write whatever he wants. He can write an executive order saying the sky is green, but that doesn't make the sky green. To, to undo the Constitution, you need two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate, and three-fourths of the state to sign off on a change to the Constitution. That is what's required to repeal the 14th Amendment, which is what he's trying to do. But there are some, I mean, there are some scholars, uh, uh, I wouldn't say Paul Ryan is a legal scholar, but there are some scholars who actually do agree with the president 
that the that there is wiggle room in the 14th Amendment. I and mean, we already learned from a Supreme Court case, what is it, hostile occupying forces or diplomats, kids, if born here, are not covered by the 14th Amendment. Is that not correct? Well, we have a case from 1898 where the Supreme Court so said what I'm about. that the children, from, the children of immigrants do get the protection mm. of the 14th Amendment. And the difference between the children and diplomats is that there is a country that takes those children in. For children who are born in the country from immigrants, there, there is no right to citizenship that they have from any other country, which is why the Supreme Court predicated its, its decision How's on that distinction. How does this one strike you as part of this field? I'm asking you as a citizen yeah. now, not as a former military uh, leader. Look, I think that if you, if you take a step back to think about what the foundation of our democracy is, it is human beings, us as citizens, um, choosing to give certain rights to our government. Those, gov those rights that we give to our government come from citizenship. They come from being a citizen. And that 14th Amendment is so critical in, in that process. Um, the executive or any part of government being able to choose to take those things away, it's, it's an anathema to the system that we have created over uh, the, since the founding of our country. You know, not only is the president saying he can do this by executive authority in that Axios interview, he went on to make another representation about how we are aberrational in one regard, that regard in the United States. Here's the president. How ridiculous. We're the only country in the world where a person comes in, has a baby, and the baby is essentially a citizen of the United States for 85 years with all of those benefits. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it has to end. Well, my understanding is we're the only country, if you ignore the other 30 countries, that do the exact same thing. Is that, is that correct? Right. We're not the only country. And also, he's a citizen through the 14th Amendment. His mother was not a citizen of the country. Obama's father was not a citizen of the country. Our past two presidents have been citizens because of the 14th Amendment. His view Amendment. is Obama's not a citizen of the country. Forget his father. Well, then neither is Trump. And so if he puts this in effect, everyone here at the table is with, without citizens. You know, it's that most of the most important companies in our country Country are the founders are citizens through the Fourteenth Amendment, right? So if you think about no, an the, economic, the, the, the founders weren't. The no, I'm, I'm saying the mo some of the most important of the companies, companies oh, 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 in oh, our oh, country, oh. right? The company I work for, two of our founders are citizens through the. Uh, are one of the founders uh, is um, from Ireland, and two of them the parents came and they were born here, right? You so. know, it, it, it seems that there is pretty much agreement with a couple of uh, hiccups along the way here, but. I think that he may be on to something politically, going back to you. Think of the language. They're invaders, as you know. we know. Let me just get it out. They're invaders. I think in that Axios interview, a lot of men, really bad men, and remember, until he admitted he had no evidence, they're unknown Middle Easterners, otherwise known as terrorists. Of course, he said, I have no evidence, but he went on to say, well, it might be true. My sense is, is this may be more effective in a nation where there's a lot of fear gripping people then the facts would murder. Am I wrong there? He is desperate to to get his base out to vote against what he is c calling immigrant hordes that the Democrats, by the way, in his words, are encouraging. Do he not get Soros distracted are by this, for this stuff. and don't get distracted by it because it is a larger political story in which he is trying to get people to turn out. And mind you, those troops showing up on the border are going to suppress Democrat Democratic votes in Texas, not deliberately. But we know that when you put the military into a situation, it makes uh, nervous people less likely to go out in the streets. Even though I know you don't like it, don't you think there are some people in the middle who are scared for whom this will push them over the edge, maybe into the Republican anti-immigrant margin? Well, Heather is the expert on, on the politics, but in terms of a legal matter, I mean, for clarification, no one in the caravan is invading the United States. Our laws provide people an opportunity to apply for asylum. Instead of sending 5,200 troops, he needs to send 5,200 asylum officers. But as you most no, I, the average voter, you don't need to be an historian or a political scientist to know that there's a lot of fear in this country. And when the most powerful voice in the United States does describe them as invaders, does describe them as bad actors, does describe them as unknown Middle Easterners, that has an impact on people, does it not? Well, it does. Whether it should or not. It does, and so I think it's time to, for, for people to kind of really talk about the narrative of immigration in our country. I mean, one quarter of all Americans are immigrants or the children of immigrants. If you start counting the grandparents and great-grandparents, it's, it's a large swath. Did those bosses you talk about talk about immigration publicly and their roots and that sort of thing? Absolutely, and we care very deeply about it. I do think that amongst uh, certain communities, this is, not, this is not even a debate, right? We know that as an economy, we need to bring 
high-skilled people into this country. We know that we need to bring people who want to come in and work hard and kind of build on the American immigrant story. The fact is that there's a narrative that is not getting through to the American public, and we're able to polarize this around uh, very specific issues like you're well, seeing. Well, and the remember, there was a guy who ran for president on the day he announced to call uh, those people rapists and murderers, mm -hmm. and that guy did pretty well a couple of Novembers ago. Heather, it's good, good to, to see, see you. you. Thanks so much, Gary. Thank you for your okay, time. It's you. good to see you as thank well. Thank you. Appreciate your time.